Hello, first of all, thank you for this interview. I'm glad to do it. And I, I think we, we should stop by thinking that the crisis is over. Eh? We are now in what I call a perma crisis, eh? meaning permanently in crisis. And you see we have different natures of crisis. Eh? We have the, the virus crisis, like Corona, SARS, Ebola. We have the financial problems, like the banking crisis, the financial crisis. And then we have the conflicts, like the Red Sea, the Gaza, the, the Ukraine. Economy is not such a thing as a linear process. It's rather a roller coaster. And the year 2023 was not only post-COVID recovery, but at the same time, it was a year of inflation. Inflation in Europe driven by energy prices linked to the crisis. Inflation in the United States driven by the hot labor market. And so in most of the parts of the world, we had very low growth. So we had in most of the world stagnation, inflation. That's in fact what we call stagflation. And I think for 2024, the most important is to become more resilient. This means that we will become much more robust for the next crisis. So let's be, let's be prepared for that. Well, I think that, that we both, China and Europe, it's crucial to, to work together for the prosperity. We should realize that both continents are at quite different stage of development. The European Union should not vegetate on its industrial past. Eh? And we cannot only become a pure importer of goods and services. This would not be a sustainable model for Europe. So Europe needs industry. Well, uh, allow me to, to quote um, a British economist, David Ricardo, who says that international trade has to be based on comparative and absolute. I think today we are most looking to absolute advantages. If you look to comparative, there are some things that Europe is good uh, towards China, despite the fact that China will be best in the boat. But my message would be, let's look at comparative advantages and not at absolute advantages to look for international trade. And I would like to, to, to quote a French philosopher. I'm a philosopher as well, so nobody is perfect. And I would like to quote René Girard. René Girard says, the other is at the same time the model and at the same time he's the rival. And I think that's exactly what happened. And if you look to the model part of it, we see that the Chinese model is organized and a better vision. Eh? For instance, if our companies want to obtain a permit, we have to go to enormous consultation procedures, taking time. And so if you ask in the surveys to European companies, what is your problem? The biggest problem of European companies is the lack of getting a permit in time. If you need two to three years before you can do the investment, you're losing time. So we can learn one from another. And so at the same time, China is for us a model and a rival. Well, I think that the biggest problem of Europe to start there is decentralization. Eh? In most of the countries, the part of the industry and the GDP is less than 20%. Take a country like France, 14%. Belgium 16%. So if 80 to 85% of your economy is based on services or non-for-profit sector, this is not a sustainable model. So this means that within Europe, we need to have more industry. And that's in fact something we have to do. You see, we had this, this whole issue of offshoring. Eh? Between 2000 and 2010, if you look to the European companies having more than 50, 50 employees, 40% of them, 40% left Europe, and so this made us vulnerable. And that's where we developed what we call the open strategic autonomy, saying, let's identify the goods and services that we in Europe cannot systematically and for 100% depend on other countries. And I think the open strategic autonomy, we should not forget its autonomy, but at the same time it's open. It's not closing our borders, it's working together. <laughs> Well, the first thing I'd like to say is that, that, that China has a long-term vision, which is very good. Huh? And so based on that, now you see that there are the leader differences in the production of electric cars. Huh? What's an electric car? It's a battery on wheels. Huh? And if you look to the battery production, 77% of the battery production in the world is taking place in China. Only 3% in Europe. And so you see, so they are taking the position and then looking to Europe, we should wonder what will happen. Look at the car industry in Europe. It's still 13 million 
people working in the car industry. So this is very important. We should try to find an optimal solution, sit around the table and see what we can do together. Well, what I always say, um, we should know each other because people are afraid of the unknown. And often for Europe, China is the unknown. In order to stop thinking in cliches, we should try to know each other better. What the French philosopher Levinas says, the human face. If you see the human face, it changes the world. So let's try to know each other much better. We have an Erasmus program where we exchange students among different European countries. Why would you not have an Erasmus program between China and Europe? Why would we have an exchange of young entrepreneurs between China and Europe? Why not doing joint research programs like we have the Horizon program in Europe? Why don't do something like that with China? So I would plead that we do all these things together. We should work together, not like a, a spaghetti, but like a lasagna.